is Season 3, Episode 49 of One Man's Opinion. Today I am reviewing the new Broadway musical Harmony, with music by Barry Manilow and book and lyrics by Bruce Sussman, directed and choreographed by Warren Carlyle, and running at the Ethel Barrymore Theatre at 243 West 47th Street in New York City. Before, after, or even while listening to my review, go take a visit to my Patreon page where you can help me meet expenses for this show for as little as $1 a month. I'll leave a link in the description. Your help is deeply appreciated. I admit I didn't have much expectation for Harmony going into the Ethel Barrymore Theater Saturday night, a musical written by Barry Manilow about a little-remembered men's vocal group in Europe in the early 20th century. How random can this be? But oh, how happy I am to have been properly corrected, as Harmony is the first musical of the season that I believe to be a true contender for Best New Musical. Remember, Merrily We Roll Along opened and ran for 13 days in 1981 and would count as a revival. Led by Chip Zion, the musical is mostly set from 1927 to 1935 and tells about the real-life vocal group The Comedian Harmonists, a male sextet comprised of both Jews and Gentiles living in Berlin. Zion plays Rabbi, who is the future version of the character Young Rabbi, played by Danny Kornfeld. Rabbi isn't their character's real name, it's Roman Tchaikovsky. He's nicknamed Rabbi because he was going to be a rabbi before music became his passion. It's 1988 for Rabbi, and now a lot older, reflects with us on his time with the comedian Harmonists. Harmony can easily be a musical that gets lost in its own narrative, telling us the story instead of showing us, but wisely Bruce Sussman's book doesn't get us too caught up in rabbis telling us about what's happening in the past, instead quickly setting up scenes, particularly developing the emotional moments of the piece before going forward with the action. Once the action gets going, rabbi pipes in on occasion, but not so much that it interferes with the moments of the scene. Along with young rabbi is Bobby, or Robert Biberti, played by Sean Bell, Harry Frommerman, played by Zal Owen, Eric A. Collin, played by Eric Peters, Chopin, no, not that Chopin, his real name was Erwin Boots, played by Blake Roman, and Lesh, short for Ari Leshnikov, played by Stephen Tesley. We follow the group as they meet, form, try a variety of names before settling on the comedian harmonists, and become a successful act, traveling across Europe. Women enter their lives as Rabbi meets Mary, a German played by Sierra Bogus, and Chopin meets Ruth, a Jewish anti-fascist protester who is rallying people against the oncoming Nazi regime played by Julie Benko. Of course, the Nazi regime does come, and with part of the group being Jewish, problems emerge as the ensemble has to consider what to do with themselves, find refuge somewhere else like the United States, which is a viable option debated at one point, or stay in Germany. There are many wonderful things about Harmony. Manilow's score is amazing, from the detailed vocal harmonies of the sextet to the thematic cantor-style vocalizations of Zion and Kornfeld when they sing from a more sacred place for their character. Kornfeld gives an award-worthy performance in his song every single day where he proposes to marry, assuring that he's a man of character and strength. Sierra Bogus and Julie Benko get a marvelous duet together in the second act in Where You Go, where they essentially sing the same lyrics but with opposite meaning to their respective husbands as they debate on how or if they are going to flee Germany. But Zion gets the real showstopper at the end as he sings Threnody. Threnody means a lament, and that is exactly what it is. A soul-wrenching pouring out of grief and despair as Rabbi looks back and reflects on something he could have done that may have changed the course of history and the sorrow that consumes him. He has top billing, so I suspect he would be up for Best Actor, and if so, it would be much deserved. It's not all dramatic solo and duet ballads. The musical is about an ensemble of singers, after all, and they are called the Comedian Harmonists. There are at least four hilarious numbers spotlighting the group, from the seltzer-loaded slapstick number, How Can I Serve You, Madam?, to the politically satirical Come to the Fatherland, where they mock the Nazi party as marionettes. The vocal highlight, though, is Hungarian Rhapsody No. 20, a piece they create in honor of Franz Liszt's 19 Hungarian Rhapsodies, full of Eastern European and Jewish folk flair that is superbly arranged by Manilo and John O'Neill. There's a lot going on in harmony, and between Manilo's music, Sussman's book, and lyrics, and Carlyle's deftly paced direction, it moves quickly but never rushed. 
There are some members of the ensemble that get more attention than others, but that's to be expected, especially since it's being told from the perspective of only one of the members. The story is inspirational, tragic, and uplifting, with surprises that pop up throughout the show that will be shocking for some audience members. But the theme of harmony beyond just the vocals is what makes the musical so impactful. Like musical harmonies, there will be dissonance. But in the end, the parts make up a whole with beautiful intent, and the musical harmony is no less. But I am only one man's opinion, so be sure to leave yours in the comments below. If you'd like to see Harmony, I'll leave a link in the description where you can get tickets. Don't forget to visit my Patreon page and show your support. You can also support my channel by liking, sharing, and subscribing, and click the notification bell to be alerted to future reviews. My next review will be the off-Broadway play, Scene Partners. Thank you for watching, and I will see you at the theater.